In this lesson, I'll show you two examples on how to find the value of two or more equivalent replacement payments. Let's begin with question one, which reads, Mark is due to make a payment of $1,000 now. Instead, he negotiated to make two equal payments one year and two years from now. Determine the size of the equal payments if money is worth 8% compounded quarterly. Now before I start showing you how to answer this, let's begin with a very important formula known as the future value formula. And it looks like this. Future value is equal to the present value multiplied to 1 plus the interest raised to the power of n, which represents the number of compounding periods. This formula can easily be manipulated so that present value is isolated. And you do that by dividing both sides by 1 plus i to the power of n. So if you want the present value isolated, you end up with fv over 1 plus i to the power of n. And sometimes for convenience, the right side can be written as fv times 1 plus i to the power of negative n. Also keep in mind that we'll be replacing i, which is compounded quarterly. That's represented as i with this superscript 4, with 8% divided by 4, because there are 4 periods when it's quarterly, that becomes 2%, dividing that by 100% gives us 0 0.02. So whenever we see an i, we'll be replacing it with 0 0.02. So right now, the present value is $1,000. And because we're told that the money grows 8% compounded quarterly, we can't simply divide 1,000 by 2 and say, I'll pay 500 in year 1 and 500 in year 2. It doesn't work that way. In fact, a future value of 500 one year from today would give a present value. Let me show you. So I'll use this formula right here. The present value of 500, 1 plus 0 0.02, and since it's 500 in one year, that means four periods. So if we multiply this out using our calculator, we end up getting 461. And if we do this calculation again, but instead with negative 8 for the second year, we get a second present value that is 426. If we add these two numbers up, if we sum them up, we do not get 1,000. In fact, we'll get something less than 1,000. So what we're looking for is what future value that is equivalent for year one and year two when discounted four periods and when discounted eight periods, their sum gives 1,000. So let me write this down. What future value 1 plus 0 0.02, so this is in year 1, plus the same future value, 1 plus 0 0.02 raised to the power of 8, and that's year 2, what future value will make this statement true? Let's go ahead and solve this equation for FV, and that will lead us to our answer. So again, we have $1,000 on the left side. And for simplicity's sake, I'll rewrite these so that we're using negative exponents instead. And if you do that correctly, it should look like this. I've also gone ahead and added the 1 plus 0 0.02, and we get those. Using now what we know about common factoring, I'll factor out an FV from both of those terms. And we end up with 1.02 to the power of negative 4 plus 1.02 to the power of negative 8, and 1,000 on the left side. Adding these up and dividing both sides by that sum gives us the future value. Let me show you what I mean. So I'll take 1,000 and divide that by 1.02 to the power of negative 4 plus 1.02 to the power of negative 8. And this gives us 562.64. This means that the equal payment one year and two years from today must be 562.64, such that when discounted four periods and discounted eight periods, the sum of their present values will equal to 1,000.
That's how you answer question number one. Let's apply that same logic to this question. What is the size of the equal payments that must be made at the end of each of the next five years to settle a debt of 5,000 due in five years if money is worth 9% compounded annually? That's per annum. So I'll write that down, that the interest is 9%. That makes it a little easier for us. And so there is a debt that is worth 5,000 five years from today. So it's worth 5,000 five years from today. That's the future value of the debt. We don't know the present value. And there are many ways that you can solve this question. I'll show you one way that I find easiest. And that is, I will find out what the present value of a future value of 5,000 is given this percentage. So I'll start by finding the present value and then I'll use the same technique as before to find out my equivalent payments for the next five years. So I'll say that the present value is equal to a future value of 5,000 times 1 plus 0 0.09. We don't divide this by anything because it's per annum. And because periods occur every year, that means five periods need to be discounted to get the present value. Notice the negative five. And so let's use our calculator. 5,000 times 1.09 to the power of negative five. And the present value of a debt that's worth 5,000 five years from now is so I've gone ahead and rounded to two decimal places, but it is common practice to keep all those decimal places and round at the very end. I've only done this for convenience. Just like we did in question one, we'll take this 3249.66 value, and we're looking for a future value that when discounted one, two, three, four, five years, the present value that you get their sum gives us that amount. So the future value has to be the same for all of those payments. The only thing that changes is the denominator. So we have 1.09 to the power of 1, 1.09 to the power of 2, 1.09 to the power of 3, and you get the idea. You can write these down as negative exponents to make the solving process easier. Now we'll factor out FV from each of these. The idea now is to sum all this up and divide both sides by that sum to isolate for FV. So if you do that correctly, you should end up with a final answer that is equal to 835 decimal four six. This is an equivalent future value that will give us a sum of present values that equals to the present value of a $5,000 debt five years from today. If you have any further questions, please leave them in the comment section below or otherwise use our website at biology-forums.com. Thanks for watching.